Top Billing, billing. Uptown Murph. Top Billing, Billing. You rewind this, bet US behind this. My man Grub at Geno's was absolutely doing the damn thing against the New England Patriots. And I fear that this guy will never get the credit that he deserves because people are hung up on the pass. Update your files, man. Geno Smith is not New York Jets Geno Smith. Uh, he can definitely have the type of career trajectory that someone like Steve Young has, especially if he continues to make plays like this. Look at this right here. Now, we'll run this through, right? And you can see this guy going through his progressions, and he gets vertical pressure right up in his face, right? Look at that. As I noticed that, then look at the athleticism, and look at this. Look at the product placement. What are we doing here, man? Remember, it can't create outside of the pocket. <laughs> so imagine that. So what are we going to have here? You're going to have a three-man weave with Raekwon McMillan coming as kind of a late ad, right? So you get that. You get that right there, right? You're going to get these guys slanting down. Anthony Jennings coming this way, right? So all these guys are occupied, right? This is poor communication between Lakin Tomlinson and Connor Williams. It's hard to know who this is on, but I'm probably going to have to say this is with Lakin Thompson here because he ends up blocking nobody. But you get that late ad right up to the... Right up through the A-gap by Raekwon McMillan. And, man, this is very tough to deal with, right? For most quarterbacks, it's going to be very tough to deal with right here. You can see Stone Feet Forsyth here. Uh, you got Anthony Bradford here. Connor Williams soloed up. Look at this. Charles Cross, he has his man. Who is Lakin Tomlinson blocking? All right. Now, this guy, you may have to hold from his days with the New York Jets because I told you guys, right? He was not that good on my Jets. Not at all right there. This guy didn't have a chance, right? He was in a very bad time period with the Jets. He's since moved on and is playing much differently. But you'll see Raekwon McMillan right here in his face. What does he do, right? You can see him clearly trying to go through his progressions. Then you get that late ad. Look at the evacuation process right here. Detaches from the pocket. Keeps his eyes upfield. Gains a little distance on a guy like Raekwon McMillan, who's a really good athlete. And then look at that, throwing on the run. You can tell he's worked on that the last couple of years, and he is very good at it. And look at the product placement, sending it up right on his chest. What are we doing? Jocko. Crazy. But this really derived from this right here. When they sent Jack, Zach Charbonnet in motion, that should have told Lake and Tomlinson that he would not have anyone to mess with because you could possibly think that if this overhang defender were to come this way, Charles Cross would then meet him. Lakin Thompson then would get the guy across from Charles Cross right there. But that didn't happen, right? He ends up vacating out of the play. So that just leaves two on one right here. He has to have his eyes peeled. He needs to be looking around here and uh, making sure that nobody's coming with an interior threat. I'm not sure he even saw it. Almost again. Look at that right there. Nope. He never even saw it until it actually happened. Luckily for Gino, Jakob, he's. Eat at Geno's, a.k.a. Grub at Geno's. You know what I like about Ryan Grubb's offense? There doesn't actually seem to be a designated motion guy. The, I've noticed that every single one of these receivers have been the motion guy. That's pretty cool to really think about because it's hard to really get a beat on what somebody's going to do like that. This time you have DK Metcalf in motion. Uh, he's going to be getting vert up the field. and looks like he may be running maybe a deep dig here. Lockett launcher here, Tyler Lockett, is clearing him out. Clearing him out. The safety stays over top right here, right next to him, so he's pretty much clearing it out, which leaves room right here for Noah Fent, who's running a cell route. E at Geno's on a back-to-the-basket play-action fake, right? Sets up, gets a breach, climbs the pocket, which people were saying that he couldn't do as well, and being able to deliver the ball with a strike to your man Noah Fent. Motion, back to the basket, play action, fake, step up in the pocket, keep your eyes off field, and jock him. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Noah Fant right there. Tire blew out. Noah Fant right here had a tough game. He's fighting the damn ball. Dang, Noah Fant, what's going on with Noah Fant that day, right? The guy's usually a, a nasty, crazy athlete, right? Big old, fast athlete like that. Can't stay on his feet off of a perfect pass. 
Perfect pass right there. I don't know. The momentum just leads him out of bounds and makes him fertilize himself, right? Double fertilizer. <laughs> Kim Lon, double fertilizer. <laughs> Crazy. You can tell Grubb is really simplifying the game for those guys out there. Now, if you're going to have someone being sent, wouldn't you always throw the ball in the direction of the person being sent? You're just replacing He's sent in that direction. It really shouldn't even go past where he was sent that right there. I would like to see him make it even more simpler. You get Smith and Jigba here. He runs more to here before he gets to kind of the stopping point, stop route there. Um, But they get the job done. But, man, if he would just switch that to a hitch right here, just stop, turn, and let Gino deliver the ball while the guy is beating down on him like that, it's too easy for him. But it's still very similar there, and you get Smith and Jigba Getting up field. See it from this direction here. Get that breach coming off the side there, being sent. Just throw it to where it's coming from. And it should be a void there. Excellent. Yep, yep, yep. You see it. You see it. 150% sign up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000 with 10% gambler's insurance. All you have to do is head on over to BetUS, enter the promo code YouTube150, and it's on. Remember, it's BetUS, so you're getting that 24-7 customer support, those 24-hour payouts in the whole nine. Make sure you hop on those prop bets, and make sure you hop on those parlays, man. That's where you enter multiple bets within the same contest to level up for even more winning. Remember... Promo code YouTube150, you get 150% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. All right, what are you waiting for? Get over there, not now, but right now. Remember, I'm just going over some of the nuances. You get Jackson Smith and Jigba right here in the slot. Geno Smith, when that back foot hits on that rhythm and timing portion, you can see the anticipatory throws. Uh, My man running pretty much into the void of of the zone here. And Gino has this ball out before he even really makes his his cut, right? Before he even really is into his transition phase. Look at this. Yaku. Look at that. It's more, almost like an option route. It might be more of an option route now that I think about it right here. He's definitely reading the leverage of the defender right here in end zone. So you wouldn't take this and turn it this way. Obviously, you would take this and go into that void, which he does. But look at Gino right here. That back foot hits. He's already cocked and ready to fire look at that firing right here look the ball's already out jackson smith and jigba has not turned around yet the ball's right there allowing him to get up field and get a little bit more yards right pitch and catch check it out from this angle here ball already out you can't see smith and jigba from this angle but i mean we saw it there but see the mechanics and everything gino's just very polished People don't want to give this guy credit, right, for whatever reasons may be. Um, But, man, I believe you're going to have to start giving this guy, or not, you know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, you out there, do your thing, right? You going to be who you are. But, you know what I'm saying, it don't stop this man from shining. Look at that. Y'all, this is pretty right here. Now, it wasn't complete. I just wanted to kind of look at the particulars of it there, but it looked like it should have been complete. That's just good defense there. I can't even put that on Mayan Jigba. Uh, great throw from Gino here. Put the necessary touch, air, and opportunity in it. If you see where it comes down right here. Uh, without the defense, man, I think that's a completion with both feet in. Look at that right there. You would have simply dragged that toe right there. Now, every one of those receivers had problems in this game as far as their hands, but uh, Gino Smith was putting it where it needed to be, no doubt about that. Great play by the defender, though. Yo, this fat pressure scheme is smooth right here. You have Keon White and another overhang defender. They're going to be dropping out right on the fat pressure here. You got Mayan Jigba here running to the void of the zone. Uh, same deal with DK Metcalf, I believe, as well. Watch Geno Smith slide in the pocket laterally and throw off his back foot. And, of course, you already know the rest. What are we doing here? I love this right here. Good Blitz pick up by Charbonnet, too, and yak up between the two defenders. Y'all saw that? Let's get it right here. You can see Gino, right? 
it, on most of these plays, you really see Geno Smith really dialed into the schemes and the concepts here on the same page as Ron Grubb, pretty much controlling uh, what goes on out there. He's very much looking like a point guard here. You got that inside-out pass pro from your man Noah Fent, and then look right here, Zach Charbonnet does a really good job here. Right, you get still get a little bit of a breach, right? The pocket push in there, but look at Gino slide laterally while keeping his eyes upfield, knowing exactly where he wants to go and what's going to take shape here with Keon White dropping back to that shallow portion of the zone or the mid portion of the zone here. And then look at this right between the two defenders, Jackson Smith and Jigba. That's hard. Let's look at it from this direction. Let's look at the saddle, the the lateral movement there, subtle lateral movement. Ends up giving him the half moon, but a little bit over to the left. Waiting for him to clear. Yuck. Look at the product placement once again. And then a little bit of yards after the catch for mine Jigba. I had to look at this one again, and it confirmed pretty much what I thought when I saw it live. <laughs> yeah, that just bounced off no offense hands right there. Now, you did get a little bit of breach right here. Keon White destroying people on the inside like I said he would, right? Look at this. Bang. Your boy heavy-legged waist bending right here. Lakin Thomason, of course, on the breach. Where's Olu Olu with Timmy? If you're going to rotate in Christian Haynes, won't you rotate in Olu Olu with Timmy and see what he can do at the guard spot as well? Uh, but it looks like the pass wasn't necessarily... Did he hit his arm? Now, it looks like he may have got off. Maybe he couldn't deal with the follow-through, but the pass is on the mark right here. Maybe it got on, no offense. No, nah, no offense right in the hands. And another one. I love this particular concept. You get that switch release with looks like Bobo running to the post, and then you get that kind of a slot fade by Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, it's ran to perfection. And they caught them kind of in a pseudo zone. You can see here when they motion out Charbonnet out wide. And then he gets countered by, I believe, Duggar right here. But Duggar was originally across from Noah Fant there. So uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about there as far as the personnel matching goes. But Gino with an excellent ball, man. Outstanding pass. And nobody will remember it because it does not go down on the stat sheet. Look at him on here on the pool. And look at the throw. Mm, nasty. This is an opposite hash throw going up the field, right? His foot damn near on the opposite hash we see here. And watch this. Guy's arm strength and arm talent is very damn good. He's not getting enough credit for that. And look at the pass. Great route by your boy, Smith and Jigba here. My and Jigba let, let you down right there. Look at that. Oh, that's he's looking to toe tap and didn't even have to toe tap. He was way in bounce and drops that bad boy. Man, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy, man. Imagine if these drops were actually counted for your boy Gino. When people ask me what I mean by DK Metcalf not being a natural catcher of the ball, here's a perfect example right here. Now, being or not being a natural catcher of the ball doesn't mean you can't catch the ball, right? Just mean it didn't come natural to you, so you may do unnatural things. Look at this catch right here. What do you notice about this? All right? For all you people out there, obviously this is not live, so I can't ask you directly and get your answer right here, but I'm pretty sure most of the people out there who've played or who have natural hands would catch the ball would know that you would not normally catch the ball like this i want you to think about that drill that they do at the combine while everyone's throwing the wide receiver the ball and they're running in a straight line turning from side to side this is essentially that think about that they you turn your palms facing outward he's like the palms are facing inward and he's kind of cradling like you would do a baby think about that Cradling like you would do a baby. That's a tough way to catch right there um, as far as cradling like that. But if you were to put your hands out and pluck the ball from the sky, um, it's just a little bit different there. So that, that's just all I'm talking about. But, hey, he made the catch, right? Does it really matter in the long run? Not necessarily. It probably matters, though, if somebody is on you. That's the reason why you would catch that way when somebody's on you because you're extending your hands out and you're letting the ball not get into your body. Last one right here. I always got to practice good habits. This man, Dennis Rodman Jr. himself, on the deep dig. 
Gino places it where it needs to be. After the back to the basket play action fate, LaVisca Chenard in motion, back to the basket play action fate, cockfire, Yaka. Or not Yaka. Again, motion, hard sell. De- oh, right when that, look at that. That's That's perfect. That's perfect. That's why you don't let the ball get into your body. You see that? Instead of him reaching out and plucking the ball out of the sky, he lets it get to his body, and there you go. All right? The results. Yeah, this was a really uneven game from DK. Now, he had some really good plays, right? Obviously, the biggest play was a, was a coverage bust. So, I mean, it's only so far you can go with that. But this right here is layered perfectly right by Raekwon McMillan in the middle right there. Perfectly thrown. He lets it get into his shoulder pads and drops the ball and still takes a hit. Right? That's why a lot of people want to catch it in their body in traffic. It's not necessarily that the ball will be poked away. Some of the best hands catchers like Larry Fitzgerald and all that, they don't care. They're, they're going to catch the ball, whip their hands out, pluck that bad boy out of the sky, and then just take the hit. But if you let the ball get into your chest, to brace for taking a hit, these are the chances you take. But he dropped it. Look, the ball is already dropped before Kyle Duggar lays in on him. Now nah, he's back to stripping. Exotic dancing. Remember, 150% sign-up bonus at BetUS. Enter the promo code YouTube150. In on the high note right here, this throw right here was incredible. All right, You can see the sanitation that he has to work with right here. He can't even step up in the, into the throw. And, uh, man, he still gets it there low in a way where only Jackson Smith and Jigba can get. Look at that. A little bit of outside and vertical pressure. Oh, my God. You got to be able to see it from this angle right here. Look at this right here. What do we have? Yeah. So, oh, what a throw. Look at that. All right. So, you get those. You get a little bit of a TT stunt. Yeah, a little bit of a TT stunt right here going. They're able to get a little bit of push, but the pocket for the most part looks decently clean um so but Gino can't step up into it just because the pocket has been pushed and he's able to still cock and fire that bad boy that quick release look at the release quick release and look at the ball straight humming and once again low and away Jackson Smith and Jigbo with the hell of a catch hands catch one more time this way he kind of climbs the pocket a little bit right just a little bit to get the shuffle to step into it. And then you can just see, look at the product placement one more time. And look at the catch by your boy, Smith and Jake. But mind you, much love, everybody. I'll be back with that Scheme to Death podcast. Until then, tap in. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.